Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Tor creation feature available in Google Earth's web browser version. So this is a new feature. This will allow you to create your own Tors in Google Earth in the web browser. So we'll find this over here on the left-hand side, logged in at earth.google.com. You can tell you're logged in by looking for your account profile in the upper left corner. Let's go to projects. And here we're going to create a new project. And we're going to create this project from scratch. We're not going to do it from Drive or from a KML file. That's an advanced feature. If you have a KML feed file you've made in the desktop version of Google Earth, you can import it. Let's create this new project. And we'll just call this one a tour of Maine. And we'll say neat places to see in Maine. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new feature onto this tour. Let's hit new feature. And we're going to do search to add place. You can do an add place mark and drag and drop the pin onto the map, but this is a little more accurate. Let's do search to add place. And let's say I want to go to Sunday River, Maine. Go to the Sunday River Ski Resort. And now we're going to select add to this project. Now if it's zoomed in too much, we might want to zoom out a little bit. But we'll leave it just as is. Add to project. And we'll add it to a tour of Maine. Hit save. And now over here on the left hand side, let's edit this so that we can put in more information. To edit feature, we're going to take out this default information provided by Google. Let's replace it. And now we can add in pictures and videos. So you can go and upload an image. You can do a Google image search. Maybe I want a picture of a skier or someone skiing. And we can grab an image here. Now, the trouble with using these images is that you have to make sure that it's licensed for reuse before you add it into your project. Not all are going to be licensed for reuse. So you want to click on the image and then open that link to see if it's labeled for reuse or not. And in this case, my quick search tells me that, you know what, this image probably isn't licensed for reuse. So instead, I'm going to look at one of these other ones. Now, I know that Unsplash.com provides images that are labeled for reuse, but I'm still going to double check. And sure enough, yep, there's that image I wanted to use. Let's take a look at it. Get the info on it. And we can share it. And Unsplash Photos, by the way, is a source of high quality images that are labeled for reuse. So let's go back in now and add that in. Now we can add more images and more videos. If you want to do a video of Sunday River, Maine, or Sunday River skiing, we'll just do my YouTube search there. And we'll add that one in. And we can keep adding these in until we're happy with it. Now, I'm going to write in my description down here. It's a great place to ski. It is often the first ski resort to open in Maine each winter. Now, down here for our place marks, we have options for changing the color of the place mark. We want to use that blue one. But we also have options for changing the style of the place marker. Now, to look at more icons, let's go right there, hit more icons, and we'll find a little skier icon 
in here somewhere. There's a snowboarder, there's a ski lift. Let's use that ski lift icon. And we now have that ski lift icon right there. Now, if we don't want this place marker to be right on top of the building, we might click and drag and move it over there. Okay. Now we want to change the color of that label, maybe make it purple. Oh, now it's purple. Okay. Now our label text, we can make that extra large if we like. And we'll say we're going to have that place mark appear relative to the ground as opposed to clamped to the ground. Now, if I want to add more, let's go back in and let's add another place to our tour. So let's do another new feature and we'll do another place mark. Let's do search to add place. And in this case, I might say I want to go to Moosehead Lake, Maine. And we'll again add that to our project. We're going to add it to a tour of Maine. Let's go in and edit that place. We're going to replace that information. We're going to add a new picture. In this case, I want to add a picture of ice fishing. And again, we might want to check to make sure that these images are labeled for reuse. And I can tell from a quick search here that most of these are not labeled for reuse. So maybe I'll just do a generic ice fishing. And see if we can find one that's labeled for reuse. And if I don't, well then I'll have to upload my own image or go to a site like pixabay.com where I'll do a search for a image that's in the public domain. So here on Pixabay, I've found this image that's labeled for reuse. I'm going to download it. I'm going to download the small version of it. So I don't need to have a huge high resolution image for this project. Let's go ahead and download that. We'll use that small version. And we'll even see that reminder there that crediting isn't required, but linking back is appreciated. So now let's go back to my Google Earth. And we're going to select the option here to upload. I'm just going to drag that in. And now that becomes a part of the place mark. Now I can add more pictures again or add more videos. And we'll say that this is a popular place to go ice fishing. And again, I might want to choose a different color or style of place marker. You can even do a custom icon. And with your custom icon, you can even upload your own image. So in this case here, if I want to upload my ice fishing image, or that ice fishing image that I've just downloaded from Pixabay, I can use that as a custom icon. There's our ice fishing. And now we have that icon. And this might be one of those times we're changing the color of the label and the size of the label it could be quite helpful. So now let's take a look at our collection of place marks. Hit this preview presentation button. And we'll see here, I have this table of contents in the bottom left corner. As we go through the table of contents, that's going to move us through each of our place markers. In each place marker, if I have more than one image, I'll have this option here to toggle through them and or play the video that's included. And then, of course, move forward there. Now, when I'm done previewing it, we'll back out. And let's take a look at what we can do with the presentation from here. We'll see it's automatically backed up to my Google Drive. I can now hit the Share button. Select Get Shareable Link to share it with other people. 
They can say any one of the link can view. Now this is very similar to Google Documents. We also have the option here to say anybody with a link can edit, or I can invite someone directly, let's say Max, to edit directly and say, hey Max, please add a marker about your favorite place. And finally, up here next to the trash can button, which is pretty self-explanatory, you have the option to export as KML file. When you export it as a KML file, you can then use it in the desktop version of Google Earth. So that's a short overview of how you can use the new Tor creation tools in the web version of Google Earth. For more tips and tricks about Google Earth, please check out my YouTube channel or check out my class on practicaledtech.com all about using Google Earth and Google Maps in your classroom.